So you want to learn how to load and fire micro missiles like in Doom Eternal? Alright, check this out. First, we create a script called missile. Create a serialized field private particle system called missile particles. Serialized field just means the private variable will appear in the inspector so we can edit later. We'll come back to this particle system in a bit. Add using unity engine.ui to the top of your script so that we can access UI based classes. Create a serialized field private image array called missile icons. These will be the little HUD indicators of the current amount of loaded missiles we have. And then create another serialized field private int called max missiles. This will be the total total number of missiles that we can load up. We'll add a private integer called loaded missiles to keep track of how many missiles we currently have loaded, and a private float called load time, which will keep track of the current time before we load another missile. We'll also get back to these variables later when we start using them. This method uses particle system collisions, which require a little bit of a different setup compared to your usual on collision enter calls. Create a private list of particle collision events called collision events, which will cache the particle collisions from the particle system. We'll create a handful of other variables as well. A private I enumerator called missile coroutine for calling our delayed missile burst and a private wait for seconds called missile delay which is the amount of time before each missile is fired. The Cinemachine impulse source is purely for game feel as it adds a nice little screen shake. To use it you'll need to install Cinemachine from the package manager and then add using Cinemachine to the top of your script. You'll also need to add a Cinemachine impulse source component to the game object that has this script. On awake we'll grab the reference to the Cinemachine impulse component using get component and we'll also hide all of the missile icons using a for loop just so that they're not enabled as soon as we spawn. I created a function called controls that went into update. This basically just checks for player controls and deals with the missile logic. We use if input.getkey to check if the player is currently holding down the attack button. You can set this to any button you want. I just created a variable that sets it to the left mouse button. If the player is holding down the button and the load time is under 0.05 seconds, then we add to that load time. The 0.05 seconds represents the delay between each missile. You can turn this into a variable so that you can customize it in the inspector, but I just hard coded it. Since load time starts at zero, we're just counting up in increments until we reach 0.05 seconds, in which case we do another check. If our loaded missiles is under our max missiles amount, then we add one to the count and enable the appropriate missile icon. We simply use the current loaded missiles integer and subtract one from it to get the proper index of the missile icon, since arrays start with an index of zero. After we add the missile and enable the icon, we set the load time back to zero so that it can start counting up again as long as we're holding down the attack key. We'll use get key up to indicate when the player lets go of the attack key. At this point, we'll start firing the missiles using a coroutine. We'll check if there's currently a missile coroutine that's active, and if there is, then we stop it. We set the launch missiles coroutine at the bottom to the missile coroutine variable we had set, and then we start that coroutine. I can't really go into coroutines right now, but there are a few different tutorials on YouTube that cover them more in depth. But in simple terms, they allow you to create functions that execute lines with delays. So for the launch missiles coroutine, denoted by the I enumerator instead of void, we do a simple for loop using the current amount of loaded missile. In this instance, I set the amount as a parameter of the coroutine that gets passed through when calling it, but you can forego that and just use the variable directly. Then we just use missile particles dot emit one to fire off one missile per loop. After that, we just disable all of the missile icons using the same for loop we used in awake and then reset the loaded missiles to zero. Now let's cover the particle collision portion like I mentioned earlier. We create an on particle collision function which takes in a game object. This game object is the object Object that the particle is currently colliding with. We'll create an integer called number of collisions which will fill using a function called get collision events. This function is called from our missile particles and it does exactly what it sounds like. You pass through the game object that we're collided with as well as the collision events list we created at the beginning. For more information on get collision events I recommend reading the official unity page on it. We'll do another for loop through the number of collisions to get the position of that collision point. We'll use collision events i to get the current collision event dot intersection to get the point. Then we'll just store this in a vector 3 called pot. Again this part is purely for visual feel but we can add a cinemachine impulse using impulse.generate impulse at. This allows you to pass through a vector 3 where the impulse will be generated at as well as the direction that the impulse force will move through. In this case I'm just using vector 3.up. The particle itself uses the collision module with some tweaks. 
First, I set the lifetime loss variable to 1. This means that on collision, the particle will die. I set the collision quality to medium so that it only interacts with static colliders. But you can set this to high if you're going to be using it for moving game objects, which you probably will. Then I set the collides with variable to the default layer. This basically works like a regular layer mask that dictates what physics layer the particles will collide with. Lastly, you'll want to enable send collision messages. This is important because this is the only way that the particles will call back to your script and allow you to use on particle collision. We'll go ahead and assign the missile particle system to the missile particles variable in the inspector as well as all of the missile icons that we want. For this, I just used a simple square sprite and evenly distributed them near the center of the screen. Then set the max missiles variable to the same amount of missile icons you added. And that's pretty much it. The rest is just polishing and adding different visuals to your missiles or whatever you want to do. I created a small explosion effect that uses some particle sprites from the Kenny particle, which you should definitely check out, it's great. Anyway, hopefully that's been informative and if you like this sort of content, let me know down below. Take care.